Hi, and welcome back to Is It That Bad, uh, part of the Comic Core. Um, of course, most of our uh, cast is going to be coming on later. I know we've got some special guests possibly popping in for this one, but uh, let's let's introduce who's here. Mark. Hi. BKR90, <laughs> how you doing? I'm here. I'm alive. I'm somehow tired but i'm still here that's true and uh, also i wanted to say i won no you did not yep totally did. um so for those of you um i'm cat run figures oh yeah this is cat from cat, cat, cat run, run figures. figures and cinema figures but uh if you if you're not familiar with our kind of thing here on is it that bad it's we look at some of the shittiest the lamest the poorly <sighs> produced poorly acted the worst of the worst movies the some of them are fun some of them are cringe some of them are just downright boring but we talk about them all here on is it that bad uh yeah chris we're back hi we're back hi we were just talking about you a second ago we were actually we were actually but um so a lot of the other crew uh they're either popping either popping on um, in a little bit or later on. But uh, we are talking about Kung Pao Enter the Fist. Kung. Kung Pao Enter <laughs> the Fist. This is uh, Mark's. Mark's choice. Well, thank you, Chris. Happy Mother's Day, Mark. Happy Mother's Day, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Best cat mom around. <laughs> of I course that, I am. thought that was me. Okay. But yeah, this is my choice. The Kung Pao Enter the Fist. I last remember... Well, I mean, okay. The first time I saw this film was like 2001, 2002. It came out in 2002. I looked it up on IMDb. 2002? 2002. So it was around 2002 that I actually saw this film. It was terrible then. And it was, it was terrible now. It was terrible as a little teeny bopper, a little pre teeny bopper. I was 12. A little pre teeny bopper. <laughs> it was terrible then. All I remember from that movie was, Coco, Coco. I'm a birdie too. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> uh, he, he got that stuck in his head several weeks ago and he just could not stop saying, Coco, Coco, I'm a birdie too. And he kept asking me, like, I would know what the film was that he was talking about. Did not know. Now you know. Yeah, now I know. So, uh, Kung Pao, Enter the Fist. Uh, so, the opening scene of this movie, the baby is... The eating, Chosen One. The Chosen One. The Chosen One. Is running around his hut after he gets done watching his entire family get massacred. And then, in order to start his journey, he rolls down a hill. Yes, he did. I don't remember if I actually saw that. I think theaters. he did because it's Mark here. No, well, because you have to remember, in early 2000s, a movie would be out in theaters. And then about four to five months after, it'd be on DVD. It's not like it is now where you have to wait like six months after it's out of the theaters to get no, the Blu ray. Back then, it used to be like a year later. No. No, it was a long turn time because no, movie not if they movies were the... would be in theaters a lot longer too. Not with such a low budget movie like this. Whatever. It was a quick turn. Keep talking about the movie. Anyway. So yeah. Baby running around the hut. Baby running around the hut, beating up on people. Yeah. And then yeah. decides to roll down a hill. So yes. So the chosen one. <laughs> Ignore what Mark just said. Uh, so the chosen one is this person who is supposed to be an unstoppable fighting machine with all these crazy abilities and gifts, right? So the villain of our story, who later takes on the name of Black Betty. I love that name, by the way. Black Betty. He, uh, he decides to round up some of his thugs and massacre the chosen one's entire family. And... Then he fights the Chosen One, which, yes, Baby Foo did ensue. <laughs> Baby Foo. Baby Foo. Baby Foo. And I love the fact that you can tell that they're literally holding on to, like, a doll. 
<laughs> and like having a doll like fake kick and like punch them mm -hmm. and everything. And there's like the whole like the baby rips off its diaper to like blind someone in the fight. And it's 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 craziness, it's silliness, it is at its best. But ultimately, Black Betty and his crew burn down this hut. And uh, the chosen one is supposed to be inside, supposed to die, right? But he then throws himself out of window, still wrapped up. So they wrapped him up in like a nesting blanket in order to like have him burn to death. They made sure he was comfy for it, but uh, he jumped, he jettisons himself out of this window and you just see him rolling down this freaking hilltop. And it's just so awkward because you just hear the baby every hit go. Oh. <laughs> and uh, there's actually a moment oh. where you think the baby's going to be safe. And oh, a so woman a stops and picks the baby up. And she's like, oh, it's a baby. It's a cute little baby. Oh, I just want to take you home. I just want to take you home. Okay, bye-bye, baby. And, like, throws the baby down the hill more. No, throws him on the other oh, side of the road God. to continue down the hill. Oh, God. <laughs> it's. <sighs> and from there, he was raised by wolves. Yeah, he was. <laughs> he was raised by wolves. Best wolves around. Mm. It is Mother's Day, so I'm hoping he sent those wolves like a large rack of meat or something. Probably. It is Mother's Day, I'm just saying. It is Mother's Day. All right, so in the chat real quick. Back in the 80s and 90s, movies that did well in theaters for six months to a year, sometimes good release. Yeah. Um, that, was I, the, that was the 70s and 80s. No, in 90s, I remember there were movies that you'd be having to wait like a year, year and a half sometimes for the actual for the actual distribution. Because a lot of times distribution for theaters was different than the distribution to home video release. Mm. Sometimes there would be two companies that were working either in collaboration or even against each other at times. Yeah. And it was sometimes it was a big hot mess. But hi, Mr. Gretzky. Happy to see you back. Anywho, um, so we see the chosen one in all of his glory. Um, one of his main like superpowers is follow the tongue. The annoying orange tongue he has. Literally, I think he this post opens up his mouth and there's a tongue with the face on it that talks shit to people. I'm pretty sure this predates the annoying orange. Probably. That's where the annoying orange got their idea. Mm, maybe. I want to say so. I would say uh, it's it's a hot mess. When did the first annoying orange? Oh leave? gosh. Um. So continuing on, ultimately the chosen one is the chosen one. Everyone apparently knows he's the chosen one, and everyone has to fight him. So we do everything from going to a dojo to get trained to be. Black Betty and having to face Black Betty there to, uh, you know, de meeting his love interest. 2009. So, yeah, it does predate Annoying Orange, but it's the same exact face as hey. the Annoying Orange. <laughs> his, uh, his love interest for the movie. I can't remember this chick's name for the life of me, but oh, my God. I, I, I kind of wanted to smack her. How many? OK, so this entire movie just so you're aware, is dubbed over. Including in, the dog. In the, yes, including the dog, because dogs bark in different languages. Uh, and it's it's done over much to the same fashion of, like, Mystery Space Science Theater 3000 and things like that. You mean Science Mystery Theater yeah, 3000? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm, I'm a couple shots in. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. But honestly... I, I can see where they're going with it. And at times the dub over is really, really great. And at times it, it does not hit at all. I'll tell you the dog is the best dub in the <laughs> entire movie. Hands down. Oh, or the or, squeaky shoes. The guy with the squeaky oh, shoes is running shoes. around. Or. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but his, I, I'll tell you, the most annoying dub in this entire movie is the love interest for this film. 
Oh. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. That high pitched. <laughs> Clearly, a man is attempting to do a woman's voice here, and she keeps saying "yo yo yo" randomly, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. and it's oh my it's, gosh, it's it makes you want to rip your ears off. It really does. It really yeah. does. <laughs> but um, we get a lot of fun references, uh, inclusions of the Black Betty song at the very end, being one of my favorites. Because, uh, of course, he'd never heard the song before. Like, dude, you chose the name Black Betty. You shall call me. Black Betty. Black also, Betty. Also, so his suit is what kept Black Betty powerful. It's those, like, spikes he had in a suit. Like, you hit the spikes. Yeah. Just get him when he's not wearing the suit. Wait, Does he always tape? wear the suit? Yes. Literally, we're watching the movie, and one of my one of my big things was, okay... So why don't they just hire like a hooker or something? Or it's not that kind of movie, why Caitlin. doesn't somebody just try to seduce him? It's not that kind of movie. And to get him I know it's not that kind of movie, but you get him out of the suit. Yeah. And you can tack him all you want. Um there's there's this god awful training montage where the chosen one says that all of these this mem these members of the dojo have to hit him. And they cannot stop until he is able to jump into action and remove them all from him. And you just not don't stop hitting him with sticks, basically. And they just beat the shit out of this guy. Mm -hmm. It's it's a pretty rough scene. And they're just like, oh, are we supposed to stop? I think he's unconscious now. He's like, no, no, he said don't stop until time. And it's like, and then he stops moving completely and they just walk away. It's like, well, shall we lay on him until throw him, for him to throw all of us on him? Yeah, they were supposed oh. to. So they'd literally dog pile on him <laughs> and he's not moving. They're like, okay, chosen one, we're on you. <laughs> we're on you. Let's go. And it never happens. It's like, oh no, oh no. Um, of course, uh, in the same like time period of his training montage and everything, we get the woman with the single boob. I don't know what that was about. Or why does she have a uniboob? I have no idea. Just make the movie interesting. Uniboob. You never see uniboob, but you see unicleavage. You are All right, the so I just got a message one, from uh, from who our is... special guest. Wait, who is Simba? He shall be uh, showing up here. He's like, oh yeah, 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 chosen one. Oh, so we have sorry, we have movie. like a spirit Mufasa <laughs> that's not Mufasa, and it's it's wow. Uh huh. It really is wow. But yes. Yes. Oh, yep. <laughs> Chris Barry knows this movie. It's it's not Mufasa though, and uh, he's constantly rever referring back to the Lion King, and this is not the Lion King <laughs> by any stretch of the imagination. Um, we've got a lot of like fake deaths going on, a lot of death sequences where they're fine two seconds later. They're like, oh, I'm dying. I'm dying. There's a whole montage where like six people die and they just get slaughtered. Just because I go by Arr. this and then they're fine. Doesn't mean I'm dead. Uh, of course, the, <laughs> the one that we're all really excited about is the fact that the dog survives because the dog's dope. The dog, dog is, is dope. best friend. Dog is bae. Uh, but, you know, his one friend with the squeaky shoes, he did actually die. Oh, no. You actually no more dead. squeaky shoes. And he just walks away. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Um, I I'm gonna tell you right now. My favorite scene in this entire movie is the cow. The cow. I'm gonna tell you right now. If this entire movie was just the cow running around kicking the shit out of things and people, um, that would be an A plus film. That would not even belong on this list. It would belong like in its own subcategory of gloriousness. But this cow. Uh, he has to fight the chosen one. It's it's literally a cow. He pulls out some matrix moves. He's like shooting him with milk out of his udders. He's just stomping him. Yeah, she. Eh, she, he, whatever. 
because female cows only produce milk. Yeah, but you also saw moments where, like, grab the udders. Yeah. And it's a very clear, clear reference there. And? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, the look of just, like, determination and wanting to kick this guy's ass this cow is glorious. I want to see more of this cow. Unfortunately, he does get, well, she does get milk to a point where she's basically like this thin and she's walking away and she's all mad. Yeah. <sighs> so, you know, going to go lick their wounds and move on. Um, so hopefully if there's ever a sequel to this movie, which God, I hope not. Uh, I hope let's, so. let's make it be a movie of just the cow. Kung Pao, enter the moo. Enter the moo? Enter the moo. I really want a sequel to this movie. I I would like to see a cow. All right, what would you like to see out of a sequel for this movie? The return of Black Betty. The return of Black Betty. What would you like Black Betty to do in this movie? Would you like him to like work on getting revenge? Would you like his own story? What would you like? Uh, getting revenge, and I would see more magic tricks. Oh, my God. <laughs> Definitely more magic tricks. Those were impressive. We're Red ventriloquists. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. The, where he fights the ventriloquists. The ventriloquists. And they're trying <laughs> to, like, throw their voices. Oh, goodness. Oh, this movie. Yeah, this movie's a hot mess. This movie is a big old hot mess. Guys. Guys. I need them trucks, like, right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. What were they? Go for num checks. Go for checks. Go for checks. Go for checks. Yeah. <sighs> so let me get into the chat real quick. I know I'm not very talkative right now. It's Mother's Day. Chris Barrett, you didn't know German shepherds bark in German. Hmm. Huh. That's clever. <laughs> what do mixed breeds speak? Do they speak like gibberish? I mean, there's oh, different okay. like mixes of different languages. Oh, it's okay. That means that poodles they speak like noodles. Poodles would speak like French. Eh. 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 What would Odin speak? He's a badass dog. English. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's, <laughs> he's half pit bull, half plot hound, so I'm pretty sure he would speak English. Mixed breeds would speak English. I guess you're right. Mixed breeds bark in English. Yep. There you go. Okay. Hmm. Why would a poodle speak Spanish? One <laughs> Do poodles originate from Spain, Chris? I've always thought of poodles as like a French dog. Eh, I mean, but do they originate from Spain? <laughs> Chris, Google it. I know you got this. I believe in you. Or Mark will Google it, whatever. For those of you who are playing the home game, uh, we are currently talking about because poodles are Mexican. No. I don't think poodles are Mexican. I mean, Mexico is a relatively new discovery versus poodles are poodles the are from poodle. Spain. Okay, so they're Spanish. Okay. Hmm. Hold on. Yeah, I'm just here's what? the article. I was looking at that. I had a little thing. Okay, that's why I think they're from Spain. They were a present to King Louis. Uh, that answers. And he made them a status symbol. I get that. Gotcha. I get that. I, I always thought that poodles were very French. So, you know, there you go. Well, so, that would know. Kung Pao, enter the fist. 
<sighs> you remember watching this as a child. I I kind of remember seeing like promos for this, but I never actually I've never seen it until now. <laughs> you were so, lucky. So versus then to now, um, is it like better or worse than what you remember? Much worse. Much worse? So much worse than I remember. Like like what? I used to actually like <laughs> like when I was twelve. I would actually watch this movie like for like a lot. I've watched it like over and over again for like a month. This was the movie you'd watch over and over again, like out of whatever. Yeah. This would be one of those movies. And the Matrix. I mean, you still watch the Matrix, but why would you watch this movie? Now you understand how my brain works. Is it because the cow did the Matrix move? And it was just super random. I'm just saying he did. Oh. There he is. What's and up? Our special guest. What's up? What's good, Ledge? Man, it is good to be here live tonight. I'm ready to go and talk some bad movies. <laughs> it was, and you, you're, definitely yeah, you're definitely here, here. at the right episode. <laughs> <laughs> so what you up to, Ledge? Just cold chilling like a villain, getting up a little late on the flip side from a little bit of nappy poo, but I'm here coming at you live. Golly, Kung Pao, way of the fist. Damn, you know, after I watched about five, maybe not even, probably wasn't even into two minutes, I immediately texted Kat about this baby rolling down this (laughs) gravel rock slide. (laughs) Oh my God. And it just kept going and going and going and going. And I was like, what did I get myself into? You know? Oh. <laughs> okay. Let me, let me read your exact text. Cause it was okay. pretty funny. Okay. <laughs> like just randomly, like we hadn't really spoken much today other than yeah. saying like, Oh yes, this is going to happen. So he said, um, OMF and G a baby. <laughs> Is rolling down a rocky ass hill after some villain turned down his house. What the fuck am I watching? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude, that was it. Burnt the the damn dude. Burnt the baby's house down. Left the kid nothing. Took his parents. I just responded everything. to. Is it that? It's like welcome to. Is it that bad? <laughs> mm-hmm. It was that bad. You're welcome. Uh, so aggressively relaxing has joined the chat. What's up, aggressively? How you doing? Wait, Ledger, what you eating? Oh, oh yeah, you know your classics. On, hold, on. hold on, where is it? It's a bag of these good old- What the f- is Mark eating? <laughs> I got a little bag of wild berry skittles in there. Wild berry skittles. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I had to do the gimmick. It's not Mark today, but I had to do the gimmick because it was there. Yeah. I don't ever get to do the gimmicks, so I was pretty excited. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what have y'all been eating tonight? Uh, I made pork chops last Yo. night, and I had a bunch of pork chops. They're really good. And then I had a sandwich that Katie made me. Oh. Yeah. Dude, pork chop and sandwich, a freaking lethal combination. That'll put you under, but... You also got to get some candies and some snacks, too. You ain't no doubt about it. <laughs> yep. Had orange juice, does that count? <laughs> what? Had orange juice, does that count? Oh, yeah. Vitamin <laughs> C. The place to be. <laughs> I had a gin and tonic. Yeah, uh, yeah, I had that, too. Got me a little Dr. Pepper Zero on the flip side. So I'm hungry. There you so go. I'm, so I'm staying, uh, you know, staying. Uh, what, what do you call it? Getting my electrolytes in here. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Getting something in, yeah. I can, I can imagine it's Gatorade and then it's like, oh, it's good for me, you know? <laughs> Dude, I can't wait to talk about this movie. Like, there's just so many things. And, you know, f- during the final credits, they got little outtakes and bloopers. And so at the beginning of the movie, you kind of find out that a lot of this has some of this movie from like the 1970s in it or something. (laughs) And then, but the way they filmed it, they pretty much inserted this white dude into this movie. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. Oh my goodness. 
And it was cool because it like I couldn't tell. I, I didn't know what was real, was it real? Well, until I got to the cow fight scene, you know. <laughs> that was glorious. Mm, where the chosen one fights the chosen cow. You know, of course, the chosen cow, the second uh, you know, you know, I guess what is it, the the boss fight before the main boss fight, you get the cow, you know. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that second one. Yeah. So so cool, you know. Oh, Kung Pao. Le is it the Kung Pao Legend of the Fist or Hidden Fist? Enter the Fist. Enter the Fist. <laughs> oh, my God. And then there was another scene, and it was kind of taken apart. Very cool. <laughs> Hey! The man of the hour, the man with the power. In here. What's up, Tank Papa? I was just watching you guys, and I figured I'd jump in. Yeah. yeah. Man, it's good to have Chad here, a.k.a. nobody. Nobody knows the trouble hey, I've tanks, seen. Papa. No, but that, um, <laughs> where another is movie Parker? was, you know, where you talk about Enter the Fist, I heard the master off camera, the master was talking about those other two guys, those the ones that, that one of them had the squeaky shoes and it was him and his buddy and they were stooges they were stooging off you know oh i want to beat the chosen one blah 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 you know and getting you know jealous of the chosen one and what was funny was he was talking about he was going to put on this glove and like put his fist where the sun doesn't shine it was just you know a lot of the little comedy was the voice acting from the voice the uh, uh, english american i don't even know what the <laughs> The voice acting was kind of racist for today's times. Oh, yeah. Damn, back then in 2002? Holy shit, that was some good comedy right there. Oh, man. Yeah, Ooh. I don't think you can get away with making that movie today. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't age well, Chad. What do you that. think? <laughs> Kung Pao, I called Chad. Or actually, Chad called me in the middle of this Matrix effect scene during the cow fight with where the cow, the Chosen yes. One's doing the whole limbo and the cow shooting those slow motion milk shots. <laughs> and, and Chad, Chad called me right during that scene and I just started laughing. I told you all about it. Chad, you've seen Kung Pao, man. What That's do you right. think about it's, entering the fist? It's been a minute, man. I just remember, yeah, they, they definitely couldn't get away with it now. That's for mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> So, Mark told me before you guys got on here that this was one of his favorite movies when he was, like, a tween. Mm -hmm. Like, he watched this movie, like, a I lot. Thought, I thought he was a tween now. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's older than I am. No, he's not. Shut yes, he mouth. is. <laughs> Mark, were you watching this movie on VHS? We were, we were fancy enough to have DVD. Yeah, you know, this this was two thousand two. That's DVD time. My bad. <laughs> you go. <laughs> so, like, when he first appears, like wearing that robe, do you know what I'm talking about? When he's falling falling around the mayor. Oh you guys yeah. Remember that? Like when mm -hmm. Master Payne first appears. Did you notice in the very next sh shot he doesn't have any robe on? Yeah, they did it on purpose for a lot of things. What about the red shirt, black shirt? That was good comedy. Magic. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's like a whole bunch of goose. When the chosen oh, yeah. one. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. like, when the chosen one is running backwards, he runs over a wimp low. But wimp low is in Master Tang's clothes in the shot where he's running over him. Yeah. <laughs> He's the got the squeaky shoes. Wimp yeah, the squeak, that's the true. Shoes. He rewind. Yeah, he did the flashpoint. He rewinded it time, and the the dude with the squeaky shoes was just laying there. And of course, he was one of the ones that didn't get back up. <laughs> the Superman trick, right from seventy eight or whenever the hell that Chris movie was. We didn't need squeaky was. shoes slowing us down. Yeah, they couldn't bring that guy back to life. But his dog came back to life, thank God. Because yes. you know you got to have man's best friend. Speaking of man's best friend, now. This ain't no Kung Pao fisting the dog, but this is Chad. He's got a new dog. How is the the babysitting of the new dog going? It is absolutely tiring. Damn, because it's a puppy is dog. Is he awake or is he asleep? He, he's, he's, he's out. He'll sleep till the morning. But, uh, so I, I'm like, he did good Saturday. He did good Sunday. Friday, he did good. And then today, he was doing real good, and then he went over the door. 
I thought he wanted to go upstairs, and I seen him. I'm like, you motherfucker. And I jump over, and I grab him, and he just shits all over me. I'm like, <laughs> fuck. Oh, dude. <laughs> uh, like, Parenthood, Chad. <laughs> and, and like, you, you have to understand, p- puppy shit is just as bad as baby shit. Liquid brown. It, yeah. it like, just stinks the worst. Hey, I, haven't done, I haven't had a puppy in my place in a long time. Oh my god, it is rough. Mark, I like those shades. Are those glasses or what, what's going on there? Yeah, those are glasses. Yeah, those are my glasses. Oh, I thought you had shades on, bro. Nah. No, those are glasses. Nah, it's just because of the light is reflecting and whatnot. I'm going to yeah. drop this movie, Kung Pao Enter the Fist, in the chat. Katrin told me about this. It's only an hour and 21 minutes. And, and you, it just has a little bit of ads, but you won't notice the ads at all because they cut it right at the perfect point. So it's really good. It is currently available here on YouTube, free with ads. So you're not even pirating it. You are technically still helping support the creators of it by watching it. And you can do it for free. And hello, you can skip most of the ads anyway. Or you can go and pay four ninety nine and own the movie. I'm Nobody sharing. wants to own this. Or if you look really, really hard, you could find it in another country. It's not worth all that. You could literally just find it on YouTube. Yeah, but there's after ads. this, there's still ads. After this, it, it's not even. There aren't even that many ads. Not that many. It's not that many. It's fine. Not that many. You can skip most of them. Oh my god! There are like fourteen ads. Oh well. I didn't see I, it, the movie flowed so well and it was so funny it was great to have some ads to break up all that comedy because all, at times it it seemed like it was just getting to be too much you know they just it just kept being more over the top over the top to where damn it was very entertaining though as far as uh you know that guy doing the whole thing where he put himself into that old movie and created his own story out of it and it played great it it really did take a lot of what those kung fu action movies from the 70s was all about man it had a great storyline he had the girl in there of course he had his dog you know that's the dog has always been classic or at least have a classic staple in um, the film over there in asia you know to have like a dog in the film or whatever it's just good s- symbolism mm-hmm. dude what is your favorite um like like non Bruce Lee, non um, Jackie Chan, or or like mainstream. Like have Asian. to be Black Caesar, the seventies. You got Fred Williamson in there. You got all those buddies in there. Fred Williamson just beating the shit out of people with these roundhouse sidekicks. It was kind of more of that seventies crime drama, you know, where uh, Black Caesar was like the Godfather of Harlem. I mean, it was good shit, man. Good shit. <laughs> good action, you know. I like the Leroy Brown. Remember that? Oh yeah, the classic old. Uh, who's that Motown guy? The guy, the the guy that did Motown records and all that. Barry Gordy. That was Barry yeah. Gordy's um, introduction into the Asian style kung fu films. With what was it, Chad? It was the Last Dragon with Bruce Leroy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and show sure enough, man. So, hey, we got Ricky. We got Ricky Chris Gretzky. AR, aggressively relaxing. How is Chris Baird doing? I miss that dude. Mm-hmm. He's good. He's been hanging out. We've so been I, uh, debating what kind of language his dogs bark in. I, um, I'm, I, I kind of like miss hanging out with all y'all. Like, I miss, mm-hmm. I miss the Friday show. Man. Yeah. If you miss the Friday show, we got news for you. Not this Friday coming up. The Friday after that, the Comic War will be back just for the chat. Well, I <laughs> mean, this Friday, Cat uh, Run's got something cool going on, I think. Yeah. She's. You know, this Friday, you like movies. She is doing a reunion show of. Every Friday the thirteenth. Mm-hmm. And, and tell them what time is that going to be, Chad? Ten o'clock. Mm. Ten to mid- midnight with me. I'll be there with you. Yeah. 
And I wish Ledge would come out of retirement to help, but I don't even know what like what are you doing? Our, we'll have to get closer dude, to the show. Our dude's got, gonna be on there, Ledge. No, no I gotta do some that, homework. That, that, Holly. that dude's there on Sunday. Oh, this, okay. This is Friday the thirteenth, the final chapter. Oh, okay. And uh Friday the thirteenth in three D. They made it in three D. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's where right. he gets his mask. The one girl on there, her name was Tracy Savage, and her screen credits are, um, she also was on Little House on the Prairie. Mm. Well, there you go. Don't know who she was. But... You know Little House on the Prairie? Ms. Lisa Gilbert played Laura Ingalls Wilder in Little House on the Prairie, but her voice acting, she was Batgirl in the original Batman animated series. She, this woman also was in The Crooked Man, The Bone Garden, Friday mm. the 13th, Part 3, mm. The Murder of Nicole Brown Simpson, The Devil and Max Devlin, Friendly Persuasion, The Legend of Lizzie Borden. Oh, shit. Wow. Terror on the 40th Floor. Lizzie Borden stuff, man. That axe and stuff. Whew. Dude. Gave her uh, mother 40 laughs. Hey, um... I, I know, I, I, I'm just asking questions, but I mean, I know Ledge has been watching a lot of stuff, and I know, Kat, you watch some of the best cinematic. Oh, yeah. But, like, has anybody given Juniper Legacy a run? No, not yet. Uh, it's kind of on my radar, but uh, I had, like, Invincible and Winter so Soldier. Good. Not Winter Soldier, but... Um, you know, the Falcon Winter Soldier to catch up on. Two very and, good, good uh, flicks. We've been uh, catching up on, a little bit on Handmaiden's Tale mm -hmm. before this. Handmaiden's Tale. It's on Hulu. Okay, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife Brandy likes the Handmaiden's Tale. Real popular show. You know what? On uh, HBO Max, over the past couple of weeks, I've been watching the Godzilla from 2014 Kong, Skull Island, Godzilla, King of Monsters. And before it went off HBO Max, me and my little man, we got to watch King Kong versus Godzilla. And what a quartet of kick-ass monster madness that stuff was, man. I felt like I was on the edge of my seat the whole time as these big-ass bastards were breaking buildings on shit. I don't know who's dying, but it was awesome. You know what's <laughs> kick-ass? That what? chat's just kick ass. Oh, we got Ben Compton. <laughs> ben Compton, the BC. Good to see him in the house, man. Out of no, out of straight out of Compton, Ben Compton. So Ricky Marks that says, has anybody watched seen the bat, uh, Bad Batch besides Legend? We need the Friday show, says Mr. Gretzky. Chris Barrett, I have a question. Where did you message me? Because if you messaged me, I did not receive it. I'm sorry, buddy. And, you know, The Bad Batch, I cannot wait. That's going to be a good show. But I was telling Kat Wren and Chad and everybody that me and the little dude, we're still on uh, episode, no, we're season three of The Clone Wars. But we're watching all that Star Wars stuff chron chronologically because my youngest really has never been into Star Wars yet. So he's getting into it. I made, hey, there's a little one. Yeah. Hey, um, Kat, I made sauce today with green beans in it. There you Ooh. go. I, mean, I like me some green beans. I put some potatoes, some green beans. You know beans. who really likes some green beans and potatoes? This guy Mark. here. Mark. Mark, yeah. <laughs> Mark likes everything. <laughs> All oh, right. Katie I'll got me some out. spicy ice cream. I did. Mm. What? He has spicy, spicy ice, ice cream. cream. Dude, listen, I, um, oh, shit, I got a new shirt. Yeah? Fuck, I don't have it. Uh-oh. Well, go get it. You want to you you go do a... A haul, man. Go do a shirt haul. No, it's Chad. Um, if you're gonna on. start fighting somebody right Was now. Is this a mega shirt, shirt haul? This is a good shirt. You'll like mega this. shirt haul. Cat, you know, if you normally put mega in front of your title and put it in all caps, more people might watch it. <laughs> Keep that. It's an old gimmick this one guy named Alex taught me. <laughs> mega haul. You uh, you tag boobs. He did tag boobs, that crazy guy. And what's funny is my buddy Dustin used to do crazy crap like that. Like, he would put President Obama, 69, 
boobs. <laughs> he type all these those things there. Now, I don't know why he typed President Obama randomly there because I guess Obama was popular at the time. He was the president at the time. But yeah, uh, I think, where's that new shirt at? I think it's down, I think it's upstairs, and I don't want to wake uh, everybody up. But what do you um, got though? I got what this. You got? Oh my green, my oh, green, dude! Green. Is your my green screen? Yeah, I gotta fix that. Let me fix that. How you I knew that? those bricks were real. I mean, you know what I mean? <laughs> they, you could. Holy hell! Was this a Velociraptor over here, or a T Rex? T Rex. T Rex. Well, you know what else is green? See, Look right. at this piece right here. See, that's, Ooh, that's glorious. Awesome. I that's love the cool. color. I love the green. I love the the colors how they're over the green. <laughs> I love those teeth. Well, Raph got them great teeth. Make Donnie proud, you know. I'm making that for Carson. And John Elway. I'm doing that, but this t-shirt I got. Oh, wait. Here it is. Shit, I had it right here the whole time. It's pretty awesome. Right? Yeah. Uh, Don't lift it? Oh my god, you were telling me about this one. <laughs> Worst the... state ever, man. Where'd you get that? Worst state, state ever. ever. Yeah. Uh, that Ohio. Yeah, man, you, know Ohio. What, you know what we may do after this, Katrin? What's that? Did you already talk about how Kung Pao enter the fist? Is it that oh I like that shirt. Drink up. <laughs> See, it says Yin's. Yin's beaches. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Yen's bitches. Yen's bitches. Yen's bitches. Yen's is how the old Amish guy was. He bitches. No, no, we gotta say that's that's how we say shit here. Like we go, Yen's going downtown and that. Oh yeah, yeah, you gotta speed it up like that. <laughs> no, kind of like carny. Is that kind of? <laughs> it's like a carny. Like, dude, yeah. dude we Put have them Z's in there. So this true story. I think I told this a long time ago. So this lady called into my work one time. And she goes, she called up and she had a real bad Pittsburgh accent. She's like, you didn't supposed to be down here around three o'clock and that. And you never came down here. And I had to put my whole good parking chair out front and I had to go all the way around the back, pick up my parking chair. Now, now Yins were supposed to be here. Now somebody then took my parking chair. Oh, that sounds like King Joe. Do y'all remember chair? that guy? Do y'all remember King yeah, Joe? Yeah, so like. In What's a parking chair? It's a parking it, spot. No, in Pittsburgh, you you have a you keep a folding chair in your back. And Gretzky, you, that sounds like King. And then Joe's you basement. unfold it and you put it in the parking space, and and that's your parking chair. Mm. So when you come back, your space is still there. You just unfold your parking chair and put, put it in the trunk. That is pretty classic. Who's not going to just take the folding chair and move the fucking folding it, chair? It, it, it's your rule. <laughs> I would move it. Like let's see. It's just their placeholder. That, that's just how they all do that's it. That's an actual rule. Dude, look, man. So <laughs> they stole it... my parking chair. Yeah. I, I can... That Avenger, he says, Kung well, Pao, man. That's a lot of nuts. That's right. That yeah, is that's... a lot of nuts. Cat, what did you think about that line? That's a lot of nuts. <laughs> and you as a female, what did you think about that kind of humor? You know, And now remember, it's 2002. There's some <laughs> sexist stuff in there. Hell, there's one lady with uh, one boob. Uniboob. Yeah, we talked yeah. about the uniboob a little bit. Um... I mean, I, I didn't really find myself snickering to that. It was just kind of like, oh, okay, so this is happening. Mm -hmm. Chris, it was I just do funny. know rules outside I, of Indiana. Thank I do you. really love the cow, though. I Yeah, the cow we, fight. We already discussed if, if there was ever to be a sequel of this movie, we would like it to be the story of the cow. Mm -hmm. Cal's got to get more milk in him because Cal was all depleted mm -hmm. of milk after that match. Just you know, drank dry, mm -hmm. bone dry. <laughs> oh, it's okay, Chris. In Indiana, I'm not allowed to throw my couch at you. That's mm -hmm. true. It's actually a law. You cannot. You <laughs> legally cannot throw your couch at your neighbor. You know, they had the one boob. You know, and it was wild because all I could think back when I saw the one boob, I was thinking about. Total Recall, Chad, with the chick with the three boobs. <laughs> Remember that? As a young kid watching Total Recall and seeing those three boobs, what did that do to you? <laughs> what did that Dude, do to a young like, Chad? Do you, I, I ran, I met her at like a con one time. Oh, dang. Was okay. she selling like uh, those pictures, eight, those glossy 8 by 10s over three do, boobs and signing do, across all three boobs? 
Wait, you know what? I didn't meet her. I met oh. Sharon Silverstone. No, 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 no. Or... The girl... So in I think Sharon it was Stone? Mall, Mall Rats, they did it too. Oh, they did a three boob in there. Yeah, yeah. Triple boobs. All the All onions. The boobs. <laughs> All the onions. <laughs> Extra mayonnaise. Buddy. So, something, uh, maybe you guys can settle this dispute. So, something we do on Is It That Is It This Bad? Is, yeah. is That Bad? The show. This show, my dears, uh, we, uh, we rank how bad the movies are. And the worst of the worst gets the very coveted title of. Uh, queen of sunday night because you know mark's kind of outnumbered here with annie and myself and uh for the last several weeks hogzilla has been the reigning champion we we don't count the the three weeks off or whatever we had just recently but i count that but hogzilla is still the reigning champion and my question is have have either of you ever seen hogzilla the movie I have because you know what, Cat, and I'm gonna, I, I am going to admit this. I have been spending a lot of time at various hours taking dogs outside and stuff, and I've been watching a lot of your um... recommendations. Yeah, you've been that. watching some of her YouTube videos, and I've been watching <laughs> some of her video, uh, her movies, and some of them are. Awful. I mean, there are <laughs> some that are just them. terrible. Now, Mark, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that I can watch this movie like this. <laughs> you want to crack? I can guarantee you. See, like that slapstick stuff never really got me. It yeah. gets me. It's just the cows. The cow, the cow. And the dog. The cow and the dog. The fact they dubbed over the dog got me. But 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 hey, you know, if it wasn't for dub dubbing over, uh, we would have no George Dakai. Mm-hmm. Did you know that? George Dakai used to dub all the voices for all the male actors on all the uh, Godzilla flicks mm-hmm. when they would translate them into US. So he did a bit a bunch on Rodan. Is it wasn't it Rodan? Yep. What? Rodan was that classic fire monster. Yeah, so he did a lot of those. That one. So, yeah. Kat, I'm going to give it up. It goes to you. This one was just eh. eh. So, Hogzilla. Hogzilla? Hogzilla is still so. the reigning champion. Uh, Chris Barrett, what's your vote on it, my dear? I know you always vote along with us. I always. I need to watch Hogzilla. Let's see, I'm not going to give my... You know, since I haven't seen Hogzilla, I'm going to have to go with Kung Pao for now. But once I see Hogzilla, Hogzilla will probably join, you know, y'all's Hogzilla, Hogzilla recommendation. Hogzilla is a Shutter exclusive that stars Joe Bob Briggs. It's a movie that is so bad. It was plagued by so many lawsuits, so many scandals, and just so many issues that it was filmed in the mid 2000s and was just released like last year. Mm. It was just completed and released like last year because of Darcy the male girl finding out about it. Dang, it that is a long how time. Bad, Hogzilla truly is. And by the way, uh, I am still the reigning queen of Sunday nights. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, if Annie was here, we'd get her vote as well. But I think Chad and Chris are more than enough to break that. Old Siri B. Mark Sellers. He's he's been talking so much shit. About Has he, how did he want Kung Pao to win? Me. Yeah, he said he was going to throne me, and I, he really wanted to be the queen of Sunday night. <laughs> really Christ. wanted to be the no, queen of Sunday night. That <laughs> baby though, rolling down that damn gravel. It seemed like it was hitting every rocket good on the way down. The uh, 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 the baby. Uh, just, uh, if you want to be the queen, if you want to be the queen of Sunday night, we can always get the screen queen back on from Nightmare on Elm Street Two, Freddy's Revenge. Good old Mark. What was the guy's name? Mark Patton. Patton. Yeah. I don't think he's doing real well. He's mm. on. Uh, he's on the socials. Yeah, he's on Instagram. I've been. I've talked to him a little bit on Instagrams. 
Remember, we had Mark Patton. For any of you that didn't know in the chat, we had Mark Patton, the star of Nightmare on Elm Street yeah. 2. Freddy's Maybe Mark's that's asking, where's Amy? I think he means Eddie. Annie. Oh, Ricky. Uh, Ricky, you mean Annie. Yeah, oh, Ricky. He loves him some Annie Banks. Annie, Annie Banks, um, she's taking a little time off, man. She's being with the family, having some good times and some good rhymes. But she'll be back. They always come back. Ah, Jason's coming back. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not talking about Jason Smith. Chad got a little smile there. I think he knew I was going to go Jason oh, Smith on it. <laughs> just There's reminded me of that god awful Friday the Thirteenth song. Jason's coming for you with like yeah. Alice Cooper, and he's like, he's coming for you, and he's mm -hmm. seen your house. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. it's so god awful, mm -hmm. like '80s, you know. Oh yeah, very much '80s. <laughs> Hey, Wait, what's the movie we started watching last night? What movie we started watching? Who's last? messaging you, Mark? What did we start watching last night? Sure. No, or was that the other day? What did we start watching? It was watching? Michael J. Fox. Oh! Like it was one of his first movies. Class of 84. Class yeah. of 1984. Mm. We were watching that. Um, Joe Bob Briggs had it on the last drive-in. So we are watching it. Uh Huge shout out to my boy, Dr. Wolfula, for winning the Silver Bolo this weekend. Mm -hmm. Big shout out to the Seawood 1-9. You know, he loves him some shutter. What's so, the Silver Bolo? Bolo? The Silver Bolo Award is the prize that they give out uh, during the streams for uh, The Last Drive-In. Oh, and okay. it's basically given to somebody in the horror community who just, you know, is like a star of the moment. And he talks about like, oh, this person and their creations. So like the homicidal homemakers won it before. And like, I, I, I don't know. Dr. Wolfula, he's awesome. Check out his channel. Um, he also has a, a sister channel, the Gulag with Goulash. Mm -hmm. But uh, he dresses up like a wolf man and does this silly voice the entire time. And he's kind of like like one of those old school horror hosts. Elvira, and he or, just um, yeah. rip tracks all these movies. Fin Gulli, fantastic. Honestly, can, can can I bring up a list of films considered to be the worst of all time? Sure. Yes. Is Howard the Duck or Waterworld going to be in there? I don't know, dude. I haven't looked at it, but I'm a little upset. I know that I Freddy got fingered is on the mm -hmm. No, Well, one of them is going to piss. Oh, what the fuck. Uh, One one's I'm probably gonna piss me off. One's gonna okay. piss Legend off. Okay. So let me see if I can do this. Sure. Probably some of those Three Stooges movies from the old days. <laughs> oh, I I know how we'll see a uh, Legend flip a table. They talk smack about the Back to the Future movies. He'll flip. Table. Stop. Yeah, dude. The Back to the Future movies, some of the greatest of all time. Really a, a, a staple in film history and in just time travel fiction in general by uh, that classic guy who did the comic. can't remember his name. Bob Gale. That was the guy. Bob Gale wrote the story. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. That one was classic. That, um, okay, so yep. here here we go. Starting off in the 1930s, we have Maniac. Mm -hmm. yeah. Reefer no. Madness. Reefer, Reefer Madness is a historic movie for... One reason it was made and it produced to scare people to Propaganda. not smoke marijuana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was really classic. Terror of Tiny Town. Mm. No Orchids for Miss Blandish. The Babe Ruth story. How could that be a bad movie? Ow. Glenn or Glenda. Mm. Robot Monster. That sounds cool. The Conqueror. Fire Maidens from Outer Space. Fire Maidens. Plan 9 from Outer Space. Plan 9 from Outer Space, directed by the great late Ed Wood, uh, also starring Bella Lugosi in his last film role, also starring Ed Wood himself. And there's Tor Johnson. Tor Johnson fans. And do y'all know who played Tor Johnson in the Ed Wood remake movie starring Johnny Depp and Martin Landau's Bella Lugosi? Tor Johnson played. That's right. He got it. Gorilla. What was it? Uh, George the Animal the Steel. Animal Steel. Yeah, yeah. George the Animal Steel. Not Gorilla. What else okay, we got here? So we got the Beast of Yucca Flats. Uh, 
whatever the creeping terror santa claus conquers the martians which... hey didn't we watch that or try to watch that one time? Right. Mm-hmm. yeah the horror of party beach incredibly strange creatures who who stop living and become mixed up zombies okay <laughs> sounds like we it. need to watch that one that's a long they don't even have... there it is mm. okay hands on those you got hands in us ben Monsters a go go, Manos a hands of fate, place of for lovers. They saved Hitler's brain. Why? Oh, that was know. a movie. <laughs> My <Myra There's>... Breckenridge. <laughs> Five point four. Uh oh yeah. <laughs> 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 mm. Now, Exorcist 2 from 77, Linda Barrett Blair, of course, in the sequel. Uh, that's a classic. Oh, this okay. is like one of my favorite movies. Okay. That uh, wasn't that bad. I Spit what? on Your Grave is the original. Is the original. the original rape revenge story. Yeah. And I know so many feminists who would argue in support of that film. How about that Cal- heaven, how about that Heaven's Gate? Wait, this movie... Caligula. So, <laughs> oh, Caligula. Yeah. Hey, Malcolm McDowell right there. Well, see, here's the thing. Caligula, they made a comic book about it's it. And it, and it was actually pretty good. The comic was good. But this here... Um, mm, it's straight. It had, hey, it has Gore Vidal Gore controversy. Vidal. It says Gore Vidal right there. The, he's in our... Uh, that's what Gore looks like. I never knew Gore Vidal looked like that. Who is he? Well, you, you know Gore Vidal. He comes to our YouTube channel. He watches. He comments on videos. Gore Vidal. So he uh, he actually they actually have sex in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, explicit. Yeah. No, no, I mean like full. No, 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 there's like, two cuts of the movie. Like they actually hired porn stars for a different cut of the film. And shot so many scenes where they actually had like full on orgies and filming. Fish <laughs> Trump. Fish is in the house. Oh, there's Howard the Duck. Feminist, lol. Mm. Yeah, pretty much. The Lonely Lady. Superman, the quest for God, peace. that was a god. Garbage fell, kids. Mm, that I've was one never of the worst ones, too. Movie. Oh, there's really. another. There, There's a stand up citizen right there. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron James? Oh. oh, too oh. soon. Mm, this is Bill Cosby. <laughs> All right, so we got okay, Garchel, Let, Leonard Park. Hobgoblins? Six. I love Hobgoblins. Mac and me. Dude, oh, I tell you, Gretzky knows 7.2 was god-awful. It, was, it wasn't even part. It was just an alternate sci-fi one. Mm. Showgirls. Mm. Striptease. Mm. Batman, Batman and Robin. I would argue for Batman and Robin. It was pretty bad. Oh, it was the, fun, though. Drew would be pissed. The Avengers is on here. Uh-huh. 1998. <laughs> I, do you and for the thing, thing, that had Uma Thurman in it. It had Ralph Fiennes. Uh, the, you know, the, the movie Emma itself, Pill. Sean Connery is their antagonist. That movie itself had was had all the star power, but it couldn't replicate Freddy, what uh, made Peter the Park. old school UK TV show yeah. so great. Yeah, oh, Master of Disguise. That glitter. Is that is I'm surprised we didn't see Waterworld on here. You know oh, there's Ballistic X versus you know what I remember of Masters of Dis- Master of Disguise. I just remember him going, turtle, turtle. turtle yeah, I do. Turtle, turtle. turtle. <laughs> uh, the Room. Yeah, we, we've actually reviewed The Room here on the channel. That was one of Annie Banks' submissions. <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. Oh, hi, Doggy. Catwoman, that's a god awful movie. Super babies, baby gen- geniuses. The first alone, one was bad too. Alone in the dark, epic movie. I know who killed me. I know who killed me is a fun movie. Meet, Meet the Spartans. Spartans. That was hilarious. But, okay, so here's the thing. I'm I'm seeing a lot of movies like epic movie, Meet the Spartans, Last Disaster Airbender, movie, like that that are meant to be bad movies. They were made intentionally to be parodies of a lot of things that are really popular at the time. So I don't think that's really fair to throw them on there. Fateful findings, hum shekels, kidnapping, Caucasian style. Okay. <laughs> Saving Christmas. Dirty Grandpa. Yeah, that's with John, uh, Johnny Knoxville. <gasps> I love that movie. We've got 
the the dirty grandpa 2.0 remember cats yeah, cats the one was a big grandma. screw up to the, the last one on there cats that was just the god awful at least the butthole cut yeah another one that had a lot of great you know like cast and everything the problem was i think people are tired of cats you know for one thing normally we get one remake per old 80s or nostalgia movie another thing is to keep replicating that damn cats musical we don't want to see that shit anymore we want to see dogs god damn it i'm a <laughs> jellical cat yeah well i do love my two kitties i got one over there old sailors chilling I Wait, saw Jean that? Grey was chilling with Mark earlier, wasn't Jean's he? She's right here. No, she's hanging out. What's that one that I want to see? They're all in Royal Blades and then trains. Thomas the Train? Yeah, no. Thomas the Train Engine. Yeah. Thomas the Tank Engine. No, it was like a. It was, it was literally on stage. They're on rollerblades. A lot of people died while doing this production. <gasps> yes, I remember what you're talking about, but I don't remember the name of it. Was it Roller Games? Me and Chad remember that. Roller Games where we used to watch Bad Attitude versus The Violators. And boy, they throw throw down on those damn, what do they call it, roller derbies or some shit like that. <laughs> roller Games. That, that was right up there with uh, American Gladiators. Chris, Chris <laughs> agrees with me. He says anything jackass related can't be bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's that, that other one uh, that he did, Adventure Park, that's based mm -hmm. off of Class Action Suit Park or whatever. Mm -hmm. Johnny Knoxville's also in We Summon the Darkness with Alexander Dardario. And that movie is fantastic. I would highly suggest it. It is not a bad movie at all. Mm. <laughs> old Fish Tropic said, Cat in the Hat is bad. You know, that old Mike Myers, man, that was just more creepy uh, than that anything. That was a glorious movie. I watched that I was, as a kid all I was the time. Creep, I was creeped out, yeah. Super hydraulic. And men oh, so you mean... <laughs> Because he couldn't say shit. Mm -hmm. mm. It was a fun movie. I'm looking at these. Thank King, Thang a Wang, Chocolate movie. Thunder, or Ben. What was movie 43 about? It was a spoof movie. It's this. It's from the creators of like Scary Movie and like all those. Oh, okay. It's it's a spoof movie. It's like um, I think it's the one to do with superheroes. Hmm. I think. But I know it's one of the spoof movies. There's been like a million of them now. You know, I know the chat has so many questions about when is the Comic Core coming back? Well, you know, the Comic Core hadn't gone anywhere. You still get some of the best content. Check out Tuesday night's Golden Guys Wednesday shit show. And man, Friday's <laughs> coming back pretty soon. I mean, you're gonna see some real deal stuff. We we had a couple ideas. Like we wanted to. We were at one point we were gonna wait till we all went away. We were planning on going somewhere. Mm -hmm. That still it can, might happen, but we're not like we're just. I, I don't know. I think we're like over the the gimmicks that we did. The shit that we do, you know what I mean? Like the the cons. If we're gonna go to a con, we're just gonna go to a con. We're not gonna do any. We just want to be kind of like cool. Want to hang out and and talk comics and talk about like, dude. I had this idea one time that I was like, you know, there's so many good stories. Like, and I I would love to like talk Deep about dive into like a yeah, story. let's dive dive into yeah. a story. But like for example, I'm not a Scott Snyder fan. Mm hmm. I, I, I love Scott Snyder up until the final issue of anything he writes. Because, in my opinion, he just can't finish something. Mm -hmm. So, like, how could we... What would we do different? Do you know he what I mean? Like, he should just stay on American Vampire, never crossed into the DC No, Batman. like, I would love to hear... No, I would love to hear Cat's take on, like, <laughs> Death of the Family. You know? Or... <clears throat> Death of Dick. Or, like... Death of the Family... Could like how how you would have changed it? Yeah, it's honestly it is one of my favorite contained storylines within the New Fifty Two, mm -hmm. and there's nice there's so many moments, you too. glorious covers. There's so many moments where individual family members are just traumatized by things that they're seeing or experiencing, 
or potentially they might have had their faces cut off. All these horrible things that are happening around them. I mean, like Harley Quinn being stuck in that huge pit full of all the failure Harley bodies that came before her. And just all the messed up things. There was so much weight in this story. And then you're going to have the death of Damian Wayne after it. Yeah, Honestly, if they, wanted, if they wanted the death of Damian Wayne to happen in the new 52, I think it should have happened in Death of the Family. Mm -hmm. And then they could have brought him back the, the same way they did. And, you know, they could have had all of the RIP issues that they had. Uh, a fantastic one written by uh, Tomasi. The silent issue. Silent issue. Yep. The letter. And it's just Batman. Remember Kobe the letter at the end? Son, that's yes. when I that's when I started crying. You made me cry like a baby. And mm -hmm. I, I, I was lucky enough to talk to Tomasi about that a bit. Yep. And a uh, fantastic issue. One of my favorites throughout comics. But I do. I still love the death of the family because in the new fifty two, the way it started out, they're 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 fractured, they're splintered, they're not really a family. And the death of the family was actually a way to kind of bring them back together. Because even at that, that last issue, you have them all tied up to chairs, family style at a table. Mm -hmm. You know, and Batman's at the head of the table and Alfred's there. And it's like the entire family was there together. Those long tables. And I mean, they were dealing with the issues and the fallout from that together. And then the loss of Damien. And that was, for me, it was much more of a bringing them back together at that mm -hmm. point. That's right. Healing the Bat family. Chad, what's some of your favorite uh, stories or sagas that you've read that you think, eh, that ending, eh, I probably would have done something a little different. Like, honestly, um, so I, I would say... Age of Apocalypse, I would have tried to mm -hmm. somehow keep that running longer. See, I love mm -hmm. alternative realities. Me too, yeah. Um, you know, I, one thing that they did really cool is they brought Kingdom Come mm -hmm. into... They brought that whole arc over into uh, JSA, you know, yeah. with, with the Superman. Um mm -hmm. Some big arcs that I enjoyed were, I mean, you're reading one right now, Identity Crisis. Yeah, Identity Crisis, man, with uh, Ralph going through the tragedy of losing his wife. And, man, it's good shit, man. But, I'm, I I'm finished right. issue two last night. But that actually leads into Countdown. Yeah, Countdown, the 80-page uh, Ted Cord story where he finds well, no, the Maxwell. Um, he, or countdown the the weekly event. Yeah, the weekly event because the, is the weekly pretty, event before countdown to infinite crisis. I think it goes fifty two and then countdown. Okay, dude. So I've got to read fifty two. Then was I think it, it's the other way around. Because I thought it, they went up to fifty two and then they counted down. Well, let me look. Real I thought quick. they yeah. counted down to fifty two. Cause yeah, and then I've been they got, like all the weeks. From I've there. been going down a rabbit hole on the DC Infinite Universe app to where you know I started reading. I wanted to read Infinite Crisis. I'd already read Crisis on Infinite Earths, and I also read uh, the Zero Hour, which was kind of a way to tie up loose ends that were left over by Crisis on Infinite Earths. And so I was like, next I want to read Infinite Crisis because I love these, like Chad said, I love these alternate realities, but I also love when these superheroes from these alternate realities can come together, work as a team to defeat this in, in this crazy amount of odds. But uh, really cool. So when I found out about the identity crisis by reading a little bit of the countdown to infinite crisis i wanted to know how sue digby so, so died it, it was it was red. it was 51 then countdown to final crisis okay okay so i need to read that countdown weekly deal you gotta read that second the first part was that what was that called the weeks yeah 50 uh, yeah i forget what it was 52 uh, weeks or something Ledge, I have a question. Mm -hmm. After reading Identity Crisis, what I've are your read, thoughts? I've only read, read two issues. So, first okay, issue. What, what, what are your thoughts on Dr. Light? 
Okay, well, I got I got some of him. Okay, like I said, first issue, very emotional issue for Ralph, you know, where he completely loses it at the funeral. The last couple pages of issue one, you see Ralph in a chair, and he's just got this, like, like Michael Myers, you know, his eyes, like his soul, it's black. I mean, he doesn't have anything to live for anymore. He doesn't give a fuck. He wants this pe- person's head on a plate. And I didn't know anything about the action, but he said, talk to your light, blah, blah, blah. Where is he? And then in issue two, you get some of the uh, flashback scenes to where Sue Digby was raped and molested and, you know, tortured and stuff by Dr. Light in the freaking watchtower where she just went up there. She didn't have to be there. She just went up there to get a good view. And that's when Dr. Light took advantage of her when none of the other heroes were around. And then, of course, that compounded with what happened to her in issue one with just her death and burning of her body. You know, you got it really puts a hatred uh, for Dr. Light in the reader's minds. So, yeah, I don't think he is going to be one of those uh, villains to have any love for, you know, after reading this saga. Um, I want to (laughs) come back to that question in two weeks. And ask him his opinion. Yeah. Yeah, when it's all done and everything. Damn. Um, Doctor Light. Before I read it, before I read Identity Crisis, I always knew him as the silly uh, villain that the Titans slapped around. Mm-hmm. You know, and I never really took him that seriously. And then I read Identity Crisis. And it, it puts a lot of things into a different light, into a different perspective. So, uh, yeah, I'm definitely excited to see what you think of it once you're done with it. So and then I'll, I'm just going to pose this one question. Who is your favorite Robin? I don't know mine. No. This is classic. Ledge, who's your favorite Robin? I go... With my classic, Burt Ward. <laughs> in the you little like Dick Grayson. Well, yeah, Dick Grayson, yeah. Because that was the first one I ever seen on TV and everything, whether it be Super yeah. Friends or the reruns from okay. Batman 66. I guarantee you in two weeks it'll be Tim. Tim Drake. Well, Tim, on currently in Identity Crisis, Tim has been doing a lot of stuff where – his dad's worried about him because his dad, you know, knows that he's into this crime fighting stuff now. And so the dad looks to be really worried about old Tim Drake. But yeah, I'm getting some good Tim Drake action in, you know. Okay, then let, let's change the subject now. Let's just, <laughs> just, just change it. Just change it. Let's just talk about it. Logan Paul. Oh, God. What? Do we have to? <laughs> All right. We're, we're going to talk about hat. Chad's boyfriend, everyone. I got your hat. I got your hat. <laughs> Chad is such a Paul Mark. I think mm-hmm. he's gonna beat Floyd. I think he's I, gonna I beat. think Floyd's gonna embarrass that boy. I think <sighs> he's gonna embarrass that, that, that his Avenger team. says Dick Grayson, Smack them Tick ass. Drake, Tim Drake. Uh Gretzky says Kane, Kate Kane or Cassandra Kane. Cassandra Kane. Cassandra. Kane. Cassandra. Kate Kane's old Batwoman, isn't it? Yep. I still have not seen the new Batgirl season two. They got a new new Batgirl on CW, but I have not watched it. Have y'all watched the Batgirl show? I have not seen any of the Batwoman. Hey, I oh, got a, Batwoman, yeah. I got a dumb question, and because they haven't, have they brought Phantom Stranger back in DC yet? God, I don't know. I haven't. I haven't read any DC, man. Man, uh, I, well, not not modern day stuff. I just I'm, go ahead, Cap. I'm not the biggest fan with a lot of the moves and choices that they've been making with DC lately, but mm-hmm. I will tell you, uh, I read the new Robin book, and uh, really that was good. that was pretty good. That was actually really good. They that brought Connor, one, right? I'm, I'm excited. I, they I think brought Connor's Con- in that the tournament, the fighting Con- tournament. Connor Hawk, right? Yep. And that Japanese uh, Batman from uh, Batman Inc. Is in it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. I know that one. I, I liked Grant Morrison's Batman. Inc. Both volumes were really good. 
That was some good reading. I mean, if y'all are just interested in reading comic books, you'll get a lot of great information by watching the Friday Night Show. Cat, Chad, Drew, myself, and Carson. We're just big fans of the read at first. All the other stuff is just whipped cream on the top. And with that, the cherry's all on the top, man. Is Sting in the rafters? I think Sting's in the rafters. Anybody it's, seen Mortal Kombat yet? Fun. One of these days we'll see it. Before, it's fun. I like know, the I new Mortal it. Kombat. I'll put it right up there with Scorpion's Revenge. Scorpion's Revenge. Oh, look at Chris Barrett. I just read the first issue of the new Scooby-Doo Batman number one, and it was A1. Yeah, we had um, I had a copy of that uh, way back when, when they did a free... If it's a free comic book day of it or what? Oh, there he is! It's Sting! It's Surfer Sting! Boy, that's when he was agile, athletic. Shark Boy? <laughs> wow, what the hell he's doing girl. in there? ECW alum right there, old Shark Boy. All right, guys. All We're right, going to call it here on Is It That Bad? Of course, once again, you are reigning queen of the Sunday night. It is not Mark. It is me! And, uh, of course, typically we pick really bad movies to do next time. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it out here. Uh, something that we've been talking about in the off airs the last several weeks. Wanting to do that's on Shudder. Mm -hmm. Are we going to do, uh, is it The Pit? The Pit. I, I think so. The Pit. The Pit that Drew's been trying to get us all to watch. That yeah, I think he's we into need that to stuff, man. I uh, I think it needs to happen. What do you guys think? I'm always down to watch the pit. Uh, I can't wait, Chad. Are you down for the pit? I thought he was talking. Honest to God, I thought he was talking about the add-on on Fallout Three. Oh yeah, <laughs> Fallout Three, the pit. That was. I hadn't no. played that, but I've got that game. I got the game with your game. I just never had fired it up yet. You talking about the pit? I did the pit uh, fatality. When I was fighting using a little Sub Zero the other day, uh, when I was playing MK10, I still got MK10. I haven't got 11 yet. There's a uh, there's some movie on Shutter, and it's got a little boy, and he like kills people by throwing them in this pit. And then there's like uh, these weird gremlin teddy bears that are like oh yeah I see it out of the pit. And then he's like rolling around in his grandma's wheelchair after he killed her. I'm really down. I'll watch it. Yeah, any, anytime I can see someone fall in a pit is a good time. I think it should be fun. Uh, <laughs> everyone on here, good for the pit? Pit, pit it yep, is. Good. All right, so uh, I think we're going to be on hiatus for another week, but maybe come back uh, the week after. Mm hmm. So until next time, my dears. Uh, Bye. See I was going to do bye. the whole peace out and God bless, but that's that's your thing. <laughs> peace out, God bless. Bye. <laughs>